Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today in this video we are going to describe intermolecular forces. If you are up on your prefixes because you love English class, then you'll probably recognize that we're going to be talking about the forces in between molecules. As always, let's take a quick moment and break it down. First thing we're gonna do is make a list of the different types of intermolecular forces in order of strength. And then second, we are gonna determine the type of intermolecular force that a compound would exhibit. Okay, the first thing to recognize is that in the liquid and solid states, molecules are held together by attractions called intermolecular forces, or their attractions between molecules. Now there are several types of intermolecular forces that vary in strength depending on the type of dipoles involved. Dipoles, 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 dipoles. Again, we're talking about things that have slight negative and slight positive charges. Now, the first type of intermolecular force that we need to be familiar with is the weakest type known as London dispersion forces. And London dispersion forces result from the constant motion of electrons and the creation of what are called instantaneous dipoles, or these things that only last for a moment. Now, these will work to attract both polar and no nonpolar molecules. Now, basically, London dispersion forces are the creation of a very weak, instantaneous dipole that is created briefly, instantaneously, momentarily, when the electrons in an atom are all on, on one side of the atom's electron cloud. But keep in mind, the electrons are constantly moving. The dipole is only there for a brief moment before the electrons move and the dipole no longer exists. So here are a couple of freeze frames of a helium atom and how the creation of an instantaneous dipole might exist. Notice that in frame one and frame two, the electrons are in different regions of the electron cloud. But in frame three, both the electrons are on the same side of the electron cloud, creating a partially negative region and partially positive region. But it is instantaneous because in the next moment, those electrons will have moved. Now, because all atoms have electrons, all atoms and molecules will experience London dispersion forces. And the London dispersion forces get stronger with increasing amount of electrons. In other words, the more electrons you have to throw around, the larger the dipole will be. Think Coulomb's law. More negative charges all on one side are gonna create a more attractive dipole. So between neon and helium, neon will have stronger London dispersion forces than helium would because it has more electrons to swing around and create larger instantaneous dipoles. In fact, this is why we see chlorine in the gas phase at room temperature, bromine in the liquid phase, and iodine in the solid phase at room temperature. As you move from chlorine to iodine, you get progressively larger numbers of electrons. Those larger numbers of electrons allow for greater London dispersion forces, and those molecules can attract one another more strongly. And so at room temperature, the London dispersion forces aren't really strong in molecules of chlorine. So they don't really stick together and they stay in the gas phase. But in iodine, you've got a lot more electrons swinging around there per molecule of iodine, pretty much larger dipoles, and therefore molecules of iodine can attract one another and stay together in the solid phase. Also important to recognize, the more surface to surface contact you have, the more influence your London dispersion forces will have. Okay. Okay, now our second type of intermolecular force that are stronger than London dispersion forces, and these are the forces of attraction we see between polar molecules, are known generally as dipole-dipole forces. So in this example, we've got molecules that have permanent dipoles, polar molecules overall. And the dipole-dipole force is the force of attraction between the slightly positive end of one of those molecules and the slightly negative end of a neighboring molecule. And the strongest type of dipole-dipole interaction is known as the hydrogen bonding force. This results from the attraction of a hydrogen atom bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom, F, O, or N, and the shared electron pairs of another electronegative atom on a different molecule. So a classic example of hydrogen bonding exists between molecules of H, F. Again, this is just a special type, a special strong type of dipole-dipole intermolecular force. And you can see this in any molecule in which a hydrogen is bonded to a fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Those atoms do a really good job of pulling hydrogen's electron away, exposing the proton, and creating a relatively large partial positive region, which are then attracted 
to negative regions on neighboring molecules. Probably the best example of where you'll see hydrogen bonding is in between molecules of water. But as a throwback to the good old days of biology, hydrogen bonding also is the type of attraction that you see in between the base pairs in DNA. If you were to take a closer look at those molecules, you would note that there's a hydrogen covalently bonded to a nitrogen, creating the perfect storm for hydrogen bonding between those base pairs. Last thing to keep in mind about hydrogen bonding forces is that it's often depicted with a dotted line. And it's the hydrogen bonding that's responsible for some of those unique properties of water, including its relatively high boiling point. So as you take a look at your screen and your notes, recognize that the hydrogen bonds are the intermolecular forces that occur between the molecules and are depicted by a dotted line. Not to be confused with the covalent bond that occurs within the molecule itself. That is an intramolecular force within the molecule. We're focused on the intermolecular forces between the molecules. And the final and strongest type of intermolecular force that you need to be aware of is dipole ion forces. And these simply arise from the interaction of an ion and a molecular dipole often water. We see this often when we take ionic salts and dissolve them in water. The molecular dipoles, or water, interact with the charged ions in the ionic compound and essentially pull it apart. And that sums up the different types of intermolecular forces. Be sure to check out that chart that's in your notes. It sums up this video in one beautiful diagram. Before we go, keep in mind that there are physical properties such as boiling point, melting point, vapor pressure, viscosity, and surface tension that are all affected by the strength of the intermolecular forces within a substance. I want to talk about two of them really quickly that are great ways to help you determine how strong the intermolecular forces are between molecules. The first is measuring its vapor pressure. Now, it sounds very complex, but basically, if you put a liquid in a closed container, once the rates of vaporization, or liquid turning into a gas, and condensation, or gas turning into a liquid, are constant, the total amount of vapor and liquid will not change. The processes are still happening, but because they're opposite processes, there's no net gain or loss of either phase. Essentially, we say that the two processes of vaporization and condensation are in dynamic equilibrium. And when a substance has reached that point of dynamic equilibrium, and when a substance reaches that point, of dynamic equilibrium, we can measure what's called its vapor pressure. And the weaker the attractive forces between the molecules in your substance, the more those molecules will be in the vapor phase. Therefore, the weaker the attractive force is, the higher the vapor pressure. So, as you take a look at the image on your screen, let's say this substance is in dynamic equilibrium between its liquid and vapor phases. Not a whole lot of the substance has gone from the liquid to the vapor phase. In other words, the intermolecular forces of attraction are fairly strong because they're holding one another in the liquid phase. However, in an example like this, this substance, we would say, would have a much higher vapor pressure. More of the substance has gone from the liquid phase to the vapor phase, indicating that the forces of attraction between the particles are much lower because more of them have escaped into the vapor phase. And then a second really good way to determine the strength of intermolecular forces is looking at the boiling point. This is the point that molecules pull away from one another and enter the gas phase. So here, the stronger the attractive forces, the higher the boiling point. And again, as you think about this, if the molecules have really strong forces of attraction between the molecules, like water, you're gonna have to put a lot of energy in in order to overcome those forces of attraction and get them to break away and boil. Whew, okay, and that does it for intermolecular forces. Have a fantastic day.